to and go ahead. Good evening. Welcome to a wonderful conversation with bestseller Alan Klein. Uh, my name's Irene O'Garden, and uh, I wrote a book called Glad to Be Human. And and he wrote a book called The Awe Factor, and we share so much in terms of vibe that we thought we would have a conversation together uh, through Barbara's independent bookstore, the oldest one in Chicago, Barbara's Bookstore. So uh, I want to start out by just giving you a, a little intro to Alan, if you don't know him. Uh, comedian Jerry Lewis has said that Alan Klein is a noble and vital force watching over the human condition. Klein, also known as Mr. Jollytologist and the Ambassador of Light, and now uh, you're calling yourself an autologist, is that right? Yeah, you can call me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he shows audiences worldwide how to use humor and positivity to deal with life's not so funny stuff. He's an award-winning professional speaker, a TEDx presenter, and author of 30 plus books, including The Healing Power of Humor, You Can't Ruin My Day, and Embracing Life After Loss. His most recent book, The Awe Factor, How a Little Bit of Wonder Can Make a Big Difference in Your Life, was named one of the best spiritual books of 2020 by spiritualityandpractice.com. <laughs> Welcome. That is a fine, fine set of credits and fattening as we speak, I understand. There was a, a New York Times mention recently. Right. Two weeks ago, a little uh, mention in the New York Times. Well, uh, not so little, a whole paragraph. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a happy camper, right. yes. That's right. This is a this is a person you want to know a little bit more about, and and so maybe what we should do is start with how, what your definition of awe is. Does that sound like a good spot? Sounds like a great start, except I have a better start. <laughs> you do. I love it. Surprise! I would say twenty minutes before we got ready to do this event. Mm -hmm. I got an email from a friend way back east and uh, in New York City, and he wrote, Hi, Alan. I just received your book, The Off Factor, today. Also, when my four-year-old grandson, Paulie, paid a visit to me today, he was wearing a T-shirt with the word awe in the front <laughs> and awesome on the back. Can you believe it? <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're I mean, spreading awe wherever you go. That and people that you haven't heard from. Yeah, and you know that's that's really what I wanted to share with readers in the book is that there is really awe all around us, um, but but we often don't see it. So you asked about the definition of awe yeah. and. Interesting you asked that because when I thought about writing this book, I went to coffee with my former literary agent and I told him I'm writing this book and he asked me, Alan, what is awe? Mm -hmm. And I kind of stumbled with the definition. <laughs> I, uh -huh. I, you know, I, I kind of gave him something. I wasn't pleased with it. It really didn't fit right with me. Mm -hmm. So I start for the book, particularly, I start, I figured I got to know what all is. <laughs> a book about it. So I started to do uh, research about it. And if you look in the dictionary, I think there's three definitions, actually. But if you look, at least in my mind, if you look in the dictionary, it's one of the definitions is awe is reverence mixed with um, fear and wonder. And mm. I thought, fear, I don't associate fear with awe. And then I thought mm -hmm. back when I was a little kid and there was lightning and thunder, and I would be amazed. It was an awe moment when you saw the lightning, you know, the shapes and the yeah. Yeah. dark sky being lit up by all this light, how amazing that was. But then when I heard the thunder, I would run mm -hmm. under blanket, right? Because of the fear. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I think there is that combination of fear and wonder sometimes, not all the mm -hmm. time. And I think mostly not, but 
Mm -hmm. That's one of the definitions. The other definition is if you ask researchers, and I'm not a researcher, except on my own, I'm not a scientific researcher, but I want to read what they say because um, I can't remember all this because it's a little, <laughs> a little dense. <laughs> and it's actually one of the um, leaders in research, Dasher Keltner, wrote this about awe, what he says awe is. A sense of wonder and amazement that occurs when one is inspired by great knowledge, beauty, sublimity, or might. It's the existence of confronting something greater than yourself. Awe expands one frame, uh, one's frame of reference and drives self-transcendence. It encompasses admiration and inspiration and can be invoked by everything from great works of art or music to religious transformation, from breathtaking natural landscapes to human feats of daring and discovery, or as a complex emotion and frequently involves a sense of surprise, unexpectedness, or mystery. Okay, I mean, there's going to be a test on this. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's a little, for my little brain, that's a little complicated. So mm -hmm. uh, my definition of awe is when we encounter something uh, unexpected, something that knocks mm -hmm. our socks off, uh, mm -hmm. you know, something when we go, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I just came up with an acronym this week for awe, A-W-E, mm -hmm. stands for A- Wow experience. <laughs> That's good. That's so, good. Yeah. you know, whenever we get those kind of knock your socks off, you know, can't explain how this happened. It was so amazing. Mm. Or often people will, and I guess this is the religious part of all, mm -hmm. people will have that experience, that emotion of all wonder, and they'll go, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so for me, that's that's the true nature of awe. That's mm -hmm. and so that's what I write about. And I think anytime you feel any of those emotions, you're experiencing some awe and wonder. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. And I think it's wonderful to begin to pay attention to that. And that's why I like your definition because we meet with those moments more often in our lives than than we might have given credit to, uh, to awe for. Uh -huh. um, the, I, now, the, I know, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, the important thing to realize when we do get those moments is that we're being, and we'll go into some of the research, but what they're showing is that um, you're happier, you're healthier when, when you identify things that awe you, are those awe moments. Mm -hmm. Well, that's funny because I was just about to ask you. I know that you, the kind of research you do is intuitive research that draws you from place to place to, say, define what awe is for yourself. But I know that you've also come across some really sound uh, scientific research uh, uh, referring to awe. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the new, the very newest research, and this is, I think, so important for all of us, um, they took seniors, age 60, 70, 80. There were 56 of them. They divided them in two groups. So what is that? My math is not so great. 28 groups each. And they gave them the instruction that once a week, for eight weeks, they want them to go out and take a walk for 15 minutes. So they both had that instruction. But one group, they gave a little added prompt. And the prompt was when they go out on their walk to look for something that awed them or found wonder mm -hmm. or amazed them. Mm -hmm. And then they even asked them to take a photo of themselves at the time. So when they came back, they did this um, assessment of both groups. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that the group, a number of people in the group that did not have that intention to find the awe, they mm -hmm. said when they were on their walk, 
they were thinking about all the things they had to do. Like one woman said, I'm going on a trip next week and I haven't packed yet and I have to go buy stuff. <laughs> stuff. They were worried about stuff in their life. Mm -hmm. And the other people who found the awe said they had less negative emotion, more positive emotion, mm -hmm. that they um, were connected more to other people. And overall, they felt happier than the group that was not looking for the awe. Wow, <laughs> that's great. That's so, great. I mean, that that's, doesn't surprise us, really. Just that little intention, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a big thing looking for all in your life could bring more happiness. Wow. I, I think that makes perfect, perfect sense. Uh, you know, I, I think it also is something that might be helpful for those of us who are reflecting on, you know, the pandemic and, and the responses that we've had to it. And sometimes we bombard ourselves with headlines and sometimes it, 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 it we have lost track of looking for that. Um, why would you say this is important during, during this time period that we're in? Well, it's certainly important anytime, but this time may be even more important because I think during the pandemic, we're focusing on a lot of negative stuff. And yes, it's serious and people have died. A lot of people have died. And you know, lots of people are out of jobs, out of work. Kids are not in school. There's a lot of stuff to deal with. But I think what happens is people negate the good stuff, the all stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the fact is it's still there. You know, you mm -hmm. can still go on an all walk and find incredible things. You can still look inside a flower and see how amazing it is. Um, and I also, it's interesting to me because you can also do that with what human beings are doing for one another right now. I mean, it's really amazing the amount of help and compassion and, you know, caring for one another that's happening, which, which strikes right. me with awe. You know? I've, I've had since last March, since the pandemic, my daughter lives in the same city I do, San Francisco, but usually I would see her once or twice a month. Well, during last, for over a year now, every day at five o'clock, in fact, when we're done, it's, it'll be five o'clock here. <laughs> and I'm going to pick up the phone and call her. We have spoken wow. every single day. And sometimes we'll get on the phone, I'll go, Sarah, you know, I have nothing to talk about today. <laughs> and all of a sudden, a half hour later, we're still chatting about things that we have never chatted about. I remember we had several conversations about my heritage and, mm. and about my grandparents and where they came from and what it was like growing up with them. Mm. It, was, it was truly amazing. Or I'm finding out about she's an artist, some of her art projects oh, wow. that, that she's been doing and the commissions that she just got and and it just okay. or even something as simple like what are you making for dinner and I'll go oh that sounds wonderful how do you make it I want to make mm -hmm. it you know? uh -huh. it's just connected yeah. us bonded us in a whole mm -hmm. different way uh, uh. Yeah. well now you talk about dinner I, 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 I'm wondering what does a common refrigerator have to do <laughs> with awe. And I don't think you mean thaw. I think you mean awe. <laughs> <laughs> Not thaw. Awe. And Irene, this is one of my favorite stories in the book because it, it uh, well, let me tell you the story and then we'll talk mm -hmm. about it. So I was listening to the radio and there was a story about prisoners getting out of prison and what they were looking forward to doing. And so this reporter was at the prison and there were three prisoners getting out of prison that day. And they had been in prison maybe eight, 10 years or longer. And the first one, as probably can be expected, say, I'm looking forward to being with my family. You know, I've missed them all these years. I haven't seen them. I really want to hug them. And so that's to be expected. The second uh prisoner said, I love baseball. I've not been able to go to a real baseball game. I really want to go to a baseball game. One of the first things I want to do when I get out of prison. 
And the third one, and this is where I was awed, and I think it, he was awed too, was he said, I'm looking forward to opening the refrigerator. And I thought, how, what a strange answer. And then I thought, wait a minute, he's been locked up all these years. He's never been able to open the refrigerator to get ice cream or plan what he's going to have, you know, take out of the refrigerator he was going to have for dinner. It was all brought to him. Um, looking forward to opening the refrigerator was yeah. his big moment. Wow. So I thought, how often do we, you know, these, you look at a refrigerator, you don't think of all, <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> but all of those man-made, because there's nature, all that's the biggest uh, manifesto of all, but there's also mm -hmm. man-made things like a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. To really kind of stop for a moment and, and realize the technology that we have that our grandparents certainly didn't have, or I remember as a kid, we would go to the country for the summer. We didn't have refrigerators. I don't know why. We had the ice man would come a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We get this big block of ice and we would love it. Kids would love it because he would chip off ice and you get to suck uh, the ice on a hot summer's day. <laughs> so, um, but just, um, just kind of stopping. I think getting more on your life is to stop. And just realize what you have and how some people don't have it, like the prisoner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How to be thankful and, and in some ways be in awe of that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that way about hot water, actually. <laughs> but yeah, a couple of yeah. years ago, I started going, you know, the water comes out and it's hot. <laughs> and all I do is turn it. You know, it, I, I'm so grateful for hot water. I, I yeah, just think it's yeah. it, so it it and re, I renew that again and again, uh, which is another thing that I like about your approach is that you can see something over and over and still experience uh, that that marvelous uh, marvelous right. feeling. You you mentioned about nature being something that is uh, which many of us might associate with awe. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your approach or your findings well, uh, in terms yeah. of law and nature? According to those researches, the number one awe generator is nature. Um, and the second generator is being around young children or childbirth. Uh -huh. so that is amazing too. But I mm -hmm. want to show you some pictures of nature just so you get the that are experienced, perhaps. Um, Beautiful. Here's, here's one picture. You know, mm. a fall day going, wow. the leaves turning. I'm in California. I don't get that. Oops. Hello. There we are. <laughs> um, just the leaves turning are amazing. Mm. Um, and you know what's so amazing about this picture when, when you really consider it? And in the book, too, I talk about awe in, in more serious times, like in, in death. Mm -hmm. um, and if we want, we can talk about that. But when you look at this picture, what's happening is that the trees are dying. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so even in dying, there is like this amazing moment mm. of mm -hmm. beauty and awe. Mm. And the next photo? Mm. Wow. Sunsets wow. and sunrises. You know, if if you're lacking all in your life, you know, look at a sunset or go to the beach. Uh, I remember when I was in Honolulu, if you've ever been to Honolulu, mm. in other places in the world, yeah. There is this thing where people gather on the beach at sunset to look for the green flash. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so amazing because one of the things about awe that, that researchers are finding is that awe brings us together and we're uh. more passionate uh, with other people. And I remember mm -hmm. standing watching for the green flash and it didn't happen every night. 
but mm -hmm. how how friendly and how whether the green flash or happened or not how people would gather and mm. chat you know when was the last time you saw the green flash or have you ever mm -hmm. seen the green flash uh -huh. or if it did happen you know talk about how incredible it was so it really mm. brought all these strangers together who never knew each other but this common awe experience mm. help connect them and the mm -hmm. third nature thing Oh my gosh. It's just now I don't know if this is a Photoshop <laughs> photo. Wow. But what did you just say, Irene? Yeah. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And you know that's an all moment when you when you uh -huh. can say that. Um it, this is just so incredible. Um now I did get this from a site, a copyright free site, and it did have the name of the photographer. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's photoshopped. I think this is a real, I think so. a real yeah. uh, amazing. And even if this were, we have all seen things that are almost as magnificent, you know. So it, 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 this just reminds us of the possibilities. But I bet you're right. I bet this is the real deal. Right. Well, what you just said, you know, we've all seen all moments and what the research is of finding. You don't have to be there in person hmm. in, a, in a site like this. If you've mm -hmm. ever been in a site like this or something that awed you, if you have a mm -hmm. photo of that and keep that photo around, every mm -hmm. time you look at it, you have that moment of awe bringing back some of those same benefits. You know, something that all of us, almost everybody shared a couple of years ago was the eclipse. The whole country, everybody was looking up or looking into viewers for this incredibly awe-inspiring event. Right. So yeah, we've we've all done that. It's just it's yeah. just good to remember that and go back and through those thing, pictures. And pull as a those writer, <laughs> as a writer, Irene, I think you would love this. That the research have found if you write about that moment you've had uh -huh. of awe, again, it's going to bring back that same feeling. And and give you some a little glimpse of those same benefits you experience mm -hmm. when you actually experience that moment. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. I'm going to yeah. suggest that to people. <laughs> and there's one other one other slide I want to show you because it really illustrates. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, the, the, this is where the fear comes in, right, Alan? <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna bring that's what I was gonna. You're reading my oh, really? mind. Oh. This is where awe and fear remember, we talked mm. about, yeah, dictionary definition of reverence, certainly mm -hmm. mixed with fear and wonder. Now, I mm. certainly don't want to experience <laughs> this up close, <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. interesting every time I see this photo. My stomach drops a little. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. even just a photo could could give us that awe experience. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. That's all my slides. Yes, right wow. now. <laughs> That's great. Just great. Yeah. Although those two didn't look all that fearful. You know, I, I guess uh, fear it comes in a little thermometer and various people yeah, have various, I, I keep uh, looking at it and wonder how did they get on that rock? I mean, just I don't, <laughs> even if they were dropped by helicopter. Yeah. Not something I'll probably be doing, but I will look at the picture. <laughs> yeah, it's quite amazing. Wow. Wow. Um, well, now I know in your book you have lots, and, and out of your book you have lots of wonderful stories about awe. Uh, I know you have a couple of favorites that you were hoping to share with us. Could, would you kindly uh, go into those awe memory banks? Well, and... I'll, I'll share one about my mom mm -hmm. because I really, I really love this one. My mom took her first flight when she was 82. For years, I tried to get her to fly, but nothing I did or said would get her off the ground. Then one day, she won a round trip airline ticket. So finally, she got on a plane. 
I met her at the airport as she deplaned and anxiously asked her how she enjoyed the trip. Even though she was far from being a youngster, she experienced something that was not unlike the awesome moment I had watching my first, my cousin rather, take off on a plane when I was very young. My mom proclaimed, oh, it was wonderful. You got to see the tops of the clouds. Uh, uh, and I thought, how often do we see, unless you fly, you cannot yeah. see the tops of the clouds. Uh, and having, having flown some years, 100,000 miles or more, <laughs> I've seen lots of tops of clouds. And sometimes they are like amazing. Like I want to get out of the plane and walk on top of them, you know. Ah, oh, heavenly, and, heavenly. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from someone, uh, which I think you might be going to address a little bit later. Uh, okay. But Lisa, thanks for submitting this question. Uh, she asks how you use awe in your daily life. And would that be one of the things that you're going to address a little bit later? I am, but why don't we, um, I mean, I've given you some tips already, like, yeah. Have have a photo like I have this photo of flowers in my garden uh, around uh, where you can see it a lot. Uh, that might mm -hmm. bring awe. Mm -hmm. um, one of them I love. I don't know if the person asking has any children, but be around children, oh. be more childlike. Uh, yeah. Is one we talked about an awe walk. Take mm -hmm. a hike. Take a hike. <laughs> I don't mean that in a negative way. But, uh, just get out and look around you. I know I have a story in my book. I don't know what page so I can't read it. But this person finds, um, looks for, she's in the city. So she doesn't get out in nature. But she looks for things buried in the cement. Like like pebbles or tile or I don't know somebody's footprint or you know <laughs> something that somebody wrote in chalk on it and she takes photos of those and so so you don't even have to be in like full nature like the photos we showed wherever you are there is all but I'll have a lot more tips uh, near mm -hmm. the the program so mm -hmm. never ask thank that. you lisa that's lisa thank you lisa go away <laughs> <laughs> hang on um and i know you had another were you going to share i think another story oh well this is the fun part and irene this is where you come in I have, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many great stories some from my life it's how the book came about because i realized all my life, I look at these, all, I never realize all moments, but I saw them as many miracles. Mm -hmm. Like, how did this happen? You know, and um, so I start collecting all these. And then I, doing research for the book, I asked people about their, their awe stories. Mm -hmm. And so I collected those and I put them in various categories. But some of the categories, um, I'm going to read you what the story's about, and then I'll let you choose a couple, and those are the ones I'll read. Oh. So this, I don't know which, because they're all my, you know how when you have three kids, kind of, <laughs> the first one is kind of your favorite, maybe, so maybe my mom's story is my favorite, but you really love the other kids too, so I love all uh -huh. these stories. Hard to okay. pick, I'll let you pick, okay? So okay. I'll give, I'll give you the names of them. So, mm -hmm. so you're going to give me three ones, is that right? I'll give you three, and you could choose. Okay. Okay. Um, the bookstore. Since this is a bookstore, I thought yeah. that would be appropriate. Um, the offering basket, mm. or ambassador of light. 
Uh, well, that, I mean, I was going to go for a bookstore until you said Ambassador of Light. That's just too hard to pass up because well, we've all been in a bookstore and we know what an offering basket is, but we don't know what Ambassador of Light okay, is. Let me, let me look. Um, it's on page 123 for those uh, of you reading along in the book with us. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're singing along, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good. Oh, and um, can I reach for something? Because uh, I forgot to take it off the wall. It's right here. Hold on. Stay tuned. Talk about <laughs> yourself. Why, hello, Alan. Why, look at what you're doing. <laughs> huh. I'm coming. He's coming. All right, here I am. Okay. It's like show and tell. I love it. It's like when I was in grade <laughs> school. Show and, this is what I did this week. <laughs> okay. Are we getting too silly? <laughs> I hope not, because I think laughter and joy and spontaneity has its own awe-inspiring capacities. <laughs> yeah. So a few years ago, I attended a workshop in which we created a vision board representing who we were or wanted to be. Mine had a big letter A in the center of it with gold foil in the triangle within the letter and rays of sunlight radiating out from behind it. So now I can show it to you. Oh, good. So this. Wow. This was my vision board. Wow. And by the way, this is me as a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great. So you and Fred Astaire. That's that's the board. Ah, oh, wonderful. I thought I had to show it to you rather than just read. Yes. So my vision board showed not only bright rays of sun, but also at other images associated with light. <clears throat> There were lighted candles, hanging light bulbs, and strands of colorful Christmas tree lights. The board contained other aspects of my life too, but most important items were the many sources of light. After contemplating the images for a while, I realized that I was, as the board revealed, an ambassador of light. So both my I'm sorry, through both my keynote speeches and my books, I have touched many lives and helped them lighten up. Ambassador mm -hmm. of Light was my perfect moniker. Since working on the vision board and discovering what I believe to be my calling in life, I embrace it every day. But I have rarely, if ever, mentioned my self-designated title to others. Mm -hmm. Then, just a few, a few days after creating the board, someone who I only knew casually thanked me for being in her life. She said she appreciated my joyful attitude and how it influenced her view of the world. She told me, and I quote, you are an ambassador of light. <laughs> it was one of those... I just wow. got the chills moment. Yeah. She had no idea how I had been referring to myself. Yet mm -hmm. there she was speaking the exact same words I was using to describe my why. She got it and I got to be awestruck. <laughs> oh, yay. That is a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story. Oh, thank you for picking that story, Irene. It's yeah. your, your choosing. <laughs> I just love that. Um, well, um, oh, uh, you mentioned something about Cirque du Soleil. And oh. oh, my goodness. Um, have you ever seen Cirque du Soleil? Oh, my goodness. Talk about awe. Yes, yes. Talk it, about it, awe. And actually, if you look at their website, Mm -hmm. They said, you know, there are five senses supposedly we have and that they created the sixth sense. And they're mm -hmm. talking about awe. Oh, and one, you know, I have been nearly all of them, particularly oh. once in Las Vegas. I mean, I was mm -hmm. to the one called O, which stands for oh. water. 
and I was in the second row and the wet seats. <laughs> they yeah. <did> the wet <laughs> But for anyone listening that has not been, I mean, that show, yeah. people uh, walk on the stage on like a little thing, layer of water, and then 30 seconds later, they're diving from 50, 100 feet up into the stage. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's one all about fire. And yeah. I, used to, I used to be a scenic designer, and there was a moment in that mm. show that blew me away. So just quick, quick example here. Imagine that's the stage. It's mm -hmm. filled with sand. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the whole stage, because it's on this one pivot, starts going up like this. And all the sand goes into the pit. And people come over the top and go down. But as they're going down, these spokes come out. And they grab onto it. And they're hanging. <laughs> Oh and my! This is just like why don't you know? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> this this big bird comes down on top of this stage that's like this, with people in it, and then it flies over the audience. <laughs> oh my! Oh. Heavens! <laughs> Every show has some magic awe moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's one researcher who. Um, his name is Bo, B-E-A-U, Lotto, L-O-T-T-O. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to find out more, he has a TEDx talk on this. But mm -hmm. uh, he did research of taking, um, interviewing people and taking their, um, I don't know if it was their blood pressure. Took, I have to look that up. He, he somehow physically did something with them. Measurement, to, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and... He did it before the show, and he did it during the show. And he found that in his research, the results he found were that people, I'm going to read this to make sure I get it right. As I said, I'm not a science person. <laughs> um, but that people had increased empathy towards others. They raised the risk tolerance. And you could see why if you're watching other people doing incredible. Oh, things. yes, yes. You might. Mm -hmm. um, it enhanced people's willingness to explore the unknown. And of mm. course, all the Cirque du, Loche, Cirque du Soleil shows are like exploring the unknown. Like it's yeah. all in your mind. It's like they take things in your mind and put it on. <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It decreased uh, that watching the show decreased their stress. And actually, um, it, for me, Cirque du Soleil, and he didn't find that, but it was another example of fear and wonder. You know? Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. It just uh, brings that. There was one show where they had a human being that was like, I think she's a little under three feet tall, and she was not a midget. She's mm -hmm. called a small person. There's only a few of those people in the in the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought she was a doll because somebody was holding her. Mm -hmm. And then they put her down and she danced around the stage. And I was like, <sighs> and my st again, my stomach dropped. It was like, this can't be real, you know. Mm -hmm. And that it increased people's creativity. Mm -hmm. So um, if you haven't seen a Cirque du Soleil show, I advise you to go and uh, mm. all of those things will happen to you. <laughs> yes, very enriching. And then you can take a hike in nature and you will implode with joy. <laughs> <laughs> right. You will have so um, much awe. Well, I know we're kind of drawing down to, to the, the end here. So you did uh, mention that you were gonna share a few more of your tools and uh, techniques uh with us so definitely um, yeah yeah and uh so lisa asked about some of these things mm -hmm. i think in this world we're constantly on facebook or you know the internet uh on our cell phones i think the best advice to finding more all is to stop look and listen just mm -hmm. stop you know when you're eating your meal stop and and Imagine the awe it, in it because imagine, say, the piece of broccoli. Someone had a 
plant that seed, water it, nurture it. It had the sun had to be right. Somebody had to harvest it and put it on the truck and drive it to the store. And someone in the store had to wrap it and weigh it and price it. And mm. you had to get it home. You had to cook it. It's just like, is that not awesome? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so just yeah. look at stuff and, and ask yourself about, about mm -hmm. that. Um, just look at a simple raisin, you know, and, and see if you can examine that when you're eating it. There's a, we don't have time, but I could do a whole process with a simple raisin of, uh, mm -hmm. of exploring that. Um, and then just uh, look, look around, mm -hmm. uh, all around, uh, be around kids. I was in a, in a cafeteria where I had my uh, dog with me and it was a golden retriever with a big fluffy tail. And there was a little kid who went over to it and the tail was waving and hit the kid's face. <laughs> the kid was hysterical and laughing and, and just, um, again, be around kids, be around pets, mm -hmm. animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one of my dogs, I was watching a tennis match on TV mm -hmm. and it loved tennis balls. So it was watching <laughs> and then the ball went off the screen and it looked around, <laughs> around the TV. So be around pets, be around kids. Um, and then listen, you know, the, if you're in a traffic jam, listen to the noise, like a symphony of cars mm -hmm. instead of, instead of being annoyed, you know, Listen, and each time you're stuck, it's going to be a different symphony. So I want to read, a, this is not my um, work, but it's um, it really addresses listening. Mm -hmm. And it's by Sam Keen. Uh, it's on page 205, if you're reading along. And it's from his book called Sighting. And he said, he wrote, we heard a male bird advertise his virility by the intensity and vigor of his song. Different species of birds and insects roused themselves from sleep at different intervals and began warming up their vocal cords. At first, a few of the featured soloists and supporting vocalists began rehearsing a host of song of sparrows I'm sorry, began rehearsing. A host of song sparrows practiced the soprano melody. Purple finches and lesser sparrows added chirps, tweets, twitters. Morning doves crooned uh, the antiphonal moan. Ubiquitous crows provided the cause and cackles and woodpeckers delivered the percussion. As the morning began to warm up, insects beyond number furnished a rich drone composed of hums, buzzes, and swish of wings. All of this was accompanied by the sighting of wind, I'm sorry, the sighing of the wind and the gurgling of the brook. A few minutes after full dawn arrived, the cacophony seemed to end, and the thousand individual creatures began to tune their instruments to a simple, complex pattern. Gradually, an individual conductor forged the discord into a unified composition. Symphony in the meadow on Sugarloaf Mountain that lasted until the sun was high and hot. So just listen, just listen to things around you. It's like a symphony every time. Just listen. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. How beautiful. Well, I know you are uh, actually teaching a workshop about uh, uh, that begins sometime very soon. Uh, is that Tomorrow still night, people still day. sign yes. up for that? Yes, it's a five-week, one hour a week, starting tomorrow night, the 14th of April. It's uh -huh. five o'clock West Coast time, but it's different times across the country. And mm -hmm. people can find out more about it. It's sponsored by Unity 
San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So go to their website, Unity, U-N-I-T-Y, S-F for San Francisco, dot com, Unity, S-F, dot com. And go on to classes and then look for the awe factor. And all the information is right there. Oh, that would be great if you want to brush up your uh, your awe skills. Of course, you can't do it without the book. So uh, make sure <laughs> that you order Alan's book. Um, and, and they can find out more about Awe and Wonder and you at uh, your website. You My are, website's www.alancline.com and just spell it right because both <laughs> names can be spelled differently. So it's... <laughs> A L L E N K L E I N dot com. I think it's being posted. It is posted yes. on the the uh, chat. What do you call that? The chat column. Yeah, or? chat. Um, and, and we're going to just open this up uh, to see if anyone else might have a question uh, or an answer. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're open to them all. <laughs> um, but if not, you can confide your questions quietly to Alan via, I'm sure, his website or. Uh, well, I have a question, Irene. I yeah. have a question. Mm -hmm. Alan, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. <laughs> Alan, do you have an affirmation that you can give us about all? Why? And I was the reason hoping. I ask that question is because I, as a writer, of course, I'm a big believer in words and positive words mm -hmm. so i believe that if we could have an affirmation around for whatever we want to accomplish it's like our mm -hmm. intention putting our intention out when we're going to go for an all walk or whatever we want to get in our life so i just wrote this um today so my intention or you can take this as your intention is i allow awe and wonder to effortlessly enter my life. I allow all oh. wonder to effortlessly enter. <laughs> but yeah, any comment <laughs> or, or question? Uh, we're, we're both here. We are here. The lines are open, as they say. <laughs> Um, I'm, if we don't get any, I'm trying to see if there's any little thing that maybe we haven't talked about. Um, well, we, is intention, you were talking about intention just now. Do uh, you want to talk a little bit more about why that's uh, a helpful thing when it comes yeah. to that? By the way, I do have, and I think it was put up here. A, um, yeah, it's up here. I have a TEDx. Oh, no, it's up for Bo Lotto. Yeah. Oh, but yes. I, have an, I have a TEDx talk on the power of intention because I um, I guess I almost live my life that way. <laughs> um, some of the things I talk about on that TEDx talk is I wanted to be in the Macy Day Thanksgiving parade, and I didn't know how to do that, but I put my intention into doing that, and it happened. <laughs> um, wow. One of the most incredible awe magic moments in my life was marching in that parade it, yeah. just amazing um i wanted oh this is this is amazing speaking about intention every year in january i add or take away from my to-do list so mm -hmm. on january 5th i put on my to-do list i want to do a ted talk January 20th, 15 days later, I got an unsolicited email asking me if I would like to do a TEDx talk. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a hotline of intention. I, this I, is you great. Know, just... and it's like, and it, that's like an awe moment for me. I mean, how, that's, that's under my category of how did this happen all? Uh -huh. You know, you can't really figure this out logically. Again, uh, that's not how it works. Yeah. I just know, you know, wow. world is energy. I put out my energy and the world sometimes will feed it back, sometimes not. But um, that's intention. So if you want more on your life, put out your intention. Yeah, use the, use that. that affirmation about intent uh, or your own. Write your own. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So. That's beautiful. 
Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, um, I, I know that you have addressed the idea that there are a couple of myths that people believe about awe oh, that yeah. might not, uh, right. might not Good. be serving yeah, us. Thanks over that. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people believe that you've got to travel someplace hmm. at awe. And I think what we've shown tonight is you know, they, some people believe you have to go to the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls, and mm -hmm. that you don't, that awe is truly all around us. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, um, I was walking down the street the other day, and there was a chair that somebody put up in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of like a humorous awe moment for me because uh -huh. you could expect. <laughs> it's like look around look look all around you you know uh and listen it is a miraculous so, world um, was there ever a time i'm gonna ask you this I I had... didn't, hold on hold on i didn't oh, i sure. didn't there were two myths so i only did one. Oh yeah yeah sorry <laughs> so the second myth is that all needs to be special and as we show tonight it doesn't like the refrigerator you know it's not <laughs> So the other thing that I realized, it's like from that prisoner and, and a lot of the stories I collected, awe is often in the eye of the beholder. What I think mm. is awe, full of awe, an awe moment for me might not be for you, Irene. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. one of the researchers that I talked about, Dashiell Keltner, interviewed people, I think, from 30 different countries asking them how many times a day they found something that was awe or amazing to them. And the average in other countries, not in our country, but was two and a half times a day they found awe in their life. Wow. So it doesn't have to be special, and it is all around us. Mm. Oh, I love that. I was going to ask, if because uh, I had this experience, did you ever uh, proceed with a, a, an event or something where you were not expecting to be awed and you were just completely flabbergasted oh god uh i'm just i i mean i'll give you my example and you may yes maybe, please yeah i do uh, because my husband always wanted to go to carlsbad caverns and i was kind of like carlsbad caverns it sounded kind of cheesy and it sounded kind of like oh gee you know do it but you know i i follow my husband to the ends of the earth and he actually goes to the ends of the earth and uh so he said no we're gonna go to carlsbad so i go okay i'll go to carlsbad out of love for him and i took like five steps into this absolutely magnificent place and i was just transformed by the size and the variety. And I mean, that was a true experience of awe in nature. And it was one I was really not prepared for. So I just wondered if you've had an experience where you thought you were gonna have one kind of a thing and it turned into something completely different. Yeah, I think this would generally fit into this um, category. Um, and and it, it actually is, I'm gonna, not gonna read it, I'm gonna tell you, but it's the, offering basket story so you you mm -hmm. get it's a little bonus you actually get <laughs> um so i belong to unity spiritual center that's who's sponsoring the program tomorrow night and uh, a distant relative of mine passed away and i was really shocked but i got a great big five-figure check from them mm. wow and in Unity, um, one of the things uh, we do is we tithe 10% of all the monies that come in to our life uh, mm -hmm. that kind of speed, uh, feed us spiritually. And so I thought I, I'm committed to that and I'm going to tithe 10% of this five-figure check, which is quite a big chunk of money. Mm -hmm. And I start thinking, well, no one will know if I only tie five percent, or <laughs> uh -huh. um, you know, do I really have to do this? This I could, I could probably eat at one high class restaurant a, a month, <laughs> you know, in San Francisco for this. Mm -hmm. I could buy that 
$2,000 jacket I looked at and still have lots left over. Mm -hmm. So there I am in Sunday service and the basket's being passed around. And I have the check written out for the large amount. And my heart is beating faster and faster. And I am sweating and I am thinking, should I really put this in the basket? You know, it was like, mm -hmm. oh my, the basket came and I put it in. And Irene, I had, I would say it was a euphoric moment. It was like I was glowing, knowing that I could put this large amount of money in this basket to help other people. Mm -hmm. And that it wouldn't diminish. I still had 90% of that check. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would say maybe it was one of the very few times in my life that it was truly euphoric with wow. joy i was like floating wow. around the room uh, ah. and certainly was a major that was a major awe moment for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at ah. least totally least expected you know uh -huh. expected i just never uh -huh. thought that would happen mm. ah so. that's a beautiful <laughs> story what a wonderful well uh, uh is there anything else you'd like to share with us is there something we haven't um oh i see we do have a couple of questions here oh. let me take a look yeah great um, well while you're getting yeah. them you know i forgot when you asked about the pandemic i forgot yeah. the people that was dr fauci was with us <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I didn't get any interview questions for him. <laughs> oh, well, next time. <laughs> so uh, we have a couple minutes and we have a couple of questions. Yes, actually, we do. We do have a couple of questions. One of them is, can you find awe in mundane things? Which I think you may have. Well, I think it's how you Let's describe. A bit. Yeah. yeah, how you describe mundane things. I think. Uh-huh. You know, I think <laughs> if you think about how things are made or how they came to you or how they were invented, are they really mundane? You know, because somebody, mm -hmm. you know, the broccoli may seem mundane, but when you think about its history to getting to your mm -hmm. plate, that is not mundane. So, uh, you know, it's it's just a matter of shifting your mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is mundane and one is not. And one of the ways, another tip, is become childlike again. And I think mm -hmm. one of the reasons, maybe I could see this more than other people, is because I used to design Captain Kangaroo on oh. US television. Mm -hmm. So I had to train myself for 10 years to look at the world through the eyes of a child. Mm. So if you could do that, another tip, if you could look at your world through the eyes of a child, I mean, a child, often they'll get a gift and the box is so much more exciting. <laughs> For them, that box is not mundane. That is part, you know, they see mm -hmm. the joy in that. So just, Start looking at the world through childlike eyes and, and see what Zen calls beginner's mind. Mm. Look at mm -hmm. look at the world with beginner's mind, and I bet you more things will become unmundane if there's a <laughs> <laughs> the transformation. More the yeah. transformation of the mundane. And our friend Lisa has asked another question. Uh, she asks, do all your intentions get answered? No. <laughs> and, and the thing about intentions that I've learned over the years is that sometimes, you know, we put our intentions out and we expect them to manifest. But mm -hmm. one of my tips in my uh, TED Talk, I have five ways of manifesting. One is you can put that intention out but you don't know when the right time is for it to happen. So mm -hmm. it may not happen because it's not the right time. Maybe you haven't waited long enough. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just not the right time. Maybe um, that intention, you may have it, but it's not right for you. Mm -hmm. Because I believe there's a higher power. You know, there's that energy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's not the right time. 
you know? And so maybe you have to keep putting that intention out. Maybe you have to change the intention. Um, mm -hmm. So my thing is just put it out. It's not your job to find out when it's right or when it's going <laughs> to happen. It's your just your intention to put it out, keep focusing on that. And um, I have a whole lot of the story, but we're running about out of time. I'm, about, I'm realizing our time's it's up. Book, ah. It's in the R factor about how this book came about partly because my intention to finding a new publisher. Wow. But that took a year and a half. So, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. just uh, put the intention. Hey, Louisa, thank you. Louisa just uh, was gave us a very lovely hello. So um, uh, I, I just want to say thanks so much, Ellen. You have enriched me very much by this uh, by this conversation, and uh, I hope that other people get to enjoy your company on the page, or on the stage, or <laughs> on the film, and uh, uh, let us be out there creating even more awe. Yeah, thank you, Irene. You've been a great host. Wonderful questions. Um, I really appreciate your being here. Your joy, your um, great smile, uh, oh, and uh, advising people to go and get your book because they'll be glad to be oh. human after. <laughs> well, thank you. Many thanks. Thanks all for tuning in. You can uh, see the replay of this at you at the YouTube page of Barbara's Bookstores. So, uh, and thank you, Barbara. Creating all. We love you. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Bye bye. Bye.